What a do players and trainers, it is your boy the Blazing Squid with another power ranking from LDL Season 7, but we're in week number 9. But I am not alone. I have the thumbiest of all thumbiest souling partners. Thumb Brother 2 with me. Yo, what is going on, Thumb Thumbs? This is Thumb Brother 2, and I am excited to be doing a power ranking video finally after all this time. Yup, nine weeks in, man. It's a pretty spicy week, man. It uh, was a spicy week. And let's jump into the power rankings right away. As you guys can see here, uh, this week we had the matchup between Shay and Matt, where Matt came out victorious. Carlos versus DJ. Carlos came out victorious. Jordan versus Brandon, where Je Jordan came out victorious. Alejandro versus Ranward. Ranward came out victorious. Brandon versus Steven. Brandon came out victorious. Anthony versus Chris. And Tony came out victorious. Arthur versus Jesse. Jesse coming out victorious. <laughs> Shout out to Jetman99 on that win. And Trig versus Mark, where Mark won. Uh, man, what, what what do you have to say about these battles? Like, how did he feel? Uh, for for the most part, you know, a lot of these battles, uh, looking like going into them, it's like okay, maybe there were a couple that was really worried about. I mean, for sure, my I no not playing favoritism, but my battle against Steven was really hyped up. The battle versus Jesse and Arthur has been hyped up for like the last two weeks. The, yeah. the like the shade that's been thrown back and forth and everything, man. That as well as the uh, I want to say the uh, where is it the Carlos and DJ battle. I was really excited to see that battle, but who did I get myself into a big one for that? That was a good battle too. So I'm, I'm the, the results are shocking, as you guys do see. But you know, it it was just it was just a good week, just a good week of battles. There was no there was no battle that wasn't bad. Yep, I have to agree. I have to agree. And uh, with that said, I said we should jump into sixteen through nine ranking right away. All right, so uh, and you guys can see the standing there where. Number one seed is now officially Carlos. That's pretty, uh, that's awesome. But as you guys to see, we only have like six weeks left and the, the standings are looking a little solidified so far. But as you guys can see here, we have in 16th place, um, the Kansas City Kinglers and their coach, Trey. Uh, you want to start this one off and then I'll take the next one. Oh yeah, sure. So, uh, like we said, Trig battled uh, Mark this week, and it was a very, like I said, it was a very interesting battle. A lot of switches uh, going on back and forth. Um, I really have to give uh, Trig a lot of credit for the uh, Willow Wisping, the Mega Gyarados, as it was setting up. I thought that was an excellent play. Um, however, I will say uh, some of the things that really hindered uh, Trig while like it looks like it was going to work off work, work out to begin with i just felt like getting up that trick room with the stack attack was good but as long as the stack attack was able to stick around for the next couple turns um i know i just barely missed that knockout um sturdy man against That's one sturdy. of mark's mods it was a sturdy yeah uh, it was, oh, okay. probo pass it's a sturdy sturdy probo pass that's right i mean if the sturdy had been broken then it would have been an excellent play but uh after that i felt like trig really kind of stumbled to try and gain his footing again with trying to find the right switches and stuff and through that process i felt like he just really ended up um sacking off a lot of his walls uh earlier on than what he had hoped for or just allowing them to take enough damage to where the rest of mark's mons could just come in and honestly just uh just kind of end the rest of his team uh but other than that you know i really liked his play style like i said that pyro play mm, it was beautiful i love seeing stuff like that because it's innovative it's different and you know it's definitely a risk because you can still miss will-o-wisp and so the fact that he did land it against that mega gyarados was superb so unfortunately you know it did end in a loss from uh for trig uh which is where I, why he hasn't moved up at all but still trig is getting more creative trig is putting in his best effort each and every week and you know that's that's the best that we can help for i i have to agree he also had the nice uh trick lagging tail meow stick for the halucha which i loved i was like nice trick really did do his homework um i also have to agree uh the fact that his walls kind of went down so early is what cost him most of the match because as you guys can see late game the the ente was just able to like spam um sacred fire and nothing was gonna it was two shotting everything everything was getting two shot by sacred fire he really didn't have any checks for that uh at the late game uh nothing for the um i think it was a scarf top of bulu 
So like letting his walls really go down. Like as you mentioned, if the sack attack I had stayed around, uh, which could have really checked the boo and could have checked the the ante, uh, that could have been such a huge difference. Or even hazards setting up stealth rocks would have hint um would have minimized the entries for for ente to come in so much and just to wreck shot. So that could have been a huge difference. But I there's progress, Trey. That's the best part of all. There is progress and. Hopefully, you know, you can finally move out of that 16 spot. Hey, you just you just gotta get that you just gotta get that one good tech just that one week, dude. And before you know it, you're just gonna be flying through opponents left and right. Believe me, I've been in the 16th spot at the beginning of the season. Bro, you can climb out of that. Believe me. It's a it's a sucky part to be in, but every single week I see you working you're I'm you're I'm seeing you do your best and you know there's there's heart there and you can there's a there's a victory coming your way soon i can see it nice and moving on to the sixth the 15th spot we have the lake erie gyarados and their coach shay um so Shay had to battle matt another former ldl champion here uh very interesting matchup this week man i i really i got a bit bored i have to uh, just say that part because of the whole winsicott substituting and lead sheeting is a very very trolley set i don't really like trolley Dude. sets like that even though i have the substitute recover porygon too but like this one because it has prankster so it's like ah like how do you you stop that um so yeah it was um a lot of that um he had pretty good coverage overall it was just um the execution in a bit like instead of so much the substitute in the in the leech seed which can be a good tag um maybe just Something more offensive, something like, uh, because they had knockoff, defog, substitute, and leech, leech C, which, uh, other than scouting, Winsuka is not doing much. And against Matt's team, you need a little bit more than just that to really take him down. Uh, Matt, I, from my experience, is you need a wall breakers or really offensive mods to really take him down, which you did have a few, but the Winsicott there, I really didn't see much of a need for it um and then just that was really the the diddle the diddle play uh i read uh, scarf diddle is amazing but i think diddle could have been a different um it could have been a different set this time around or even bringing it sooner because uh he saved it till towards the end and matt was like very focused and the match and he knew how to counter it uh so he matt had he walled um just a few things like that could make a difference so like really using ditto to his fourth um usefulness is something you can still work on shay but i i can see the progress you're finally you're finally climbing out of the hole you were in man and i'm glad to finally see that what do you have um, to say about shay i i think you really hit on like the key points that whimsicott while it was um it was it, it was an interesting set and it worked for for you know a good chunk of the battle um i do feel like shay just was really really hesitant to really pull the trigger on those wall breakers i mean this man has mega low punny paired up with latias i mean those are two extremely hard hitting pokemon yet for some reason whenever it was that uh shay did want to go ahead and bring them in it was already too late and matt had already worked his way around it so i felt like if uh shay had just you know pulled the trigger on mega low punny or, or latias and gotten them in hit, hit a huge move out put a dent in matt's team it would have kind of knocked uh matt on his heels and kept him going and you know i you also put it put it bluntly right uh, as well with that ditto that ditto had to come in early that ditto should have been able to put in so much more work it could have also helped uh shay figure out what different sets and what different moves that matt had on his mons uh even if it meant you know maybe sacking the ditto off a little bit early he could still figure out you know a couple good sets all around yeah. uh with the ditto with with matt's team and so I, I, I don't know like the whimsicott play I, I i personally enjoyed it because it just allowed for the little bit of chip damage that eventually you know wore matt's team down in the long game but shay you needed to pull the trigger a little bit early oh uh, you need to pull the trigger on that mega low punny and that latias just to come in and start hitting hard yeah um moving on to the next coach in 14 spot the midwest mill tanks and coach chris you want to start this one off absolutely so um gosh uh, just such a bulky team all around this 
Uh, this match was yep. 61 turns long. 64. Um, was it? No, 61. 64. 64, 61. Nothing, in the 60s. Nothing, nothing wrong with the, with the stall, you guys. Nothing wrong with the stall, but... Uh, going up against Anthony, who also has a semi a stally team as well. It was just a lot of back and forth, lots of switching throughout the whole entire match. Um, it, it just really did come down to, you know, who could chip down whose Pokemon first. And while, um, while Chris did have the bulk, he had everything going for him. Uh, it, it, it just honestly came down to the poison damage, I feel. Like, there was so much poison damage being racked, racked up, and it took uh, Chris a while to actually get back into his Umbreon to heal Bell off so many different times that uh, that it hindered him. It hindered him in the long game, and, you know, having bulk is okay, but I'm looking at, the, I'm looking at this team that he brought, and the only offensive mon that I... The two offensive mons are going to be Throw and Landorus T. Throw's alright, but Throw can only hit so many things. The same with Landorus. Their movesets are kind of in the same ballpark where there's, you know, knockoff, uh, maybe a fighting type move with close combat, superpower, earthquake, and stuff like that. And, you know, I just felt like Shay... I mean, Chris uh, really needed more offensive threats uh, to help just go on the offensive because while bulk is good you need the effective means to go ahead and weaken down the opponent's team more and more and more and i feel like that's where chris really uh fell through this week uh but but yeah that's really all i have to say about that what about what do you have to say uh squid yeah yeah you brought out a pretty big point that uh Antony does have a pretty wall team and walls usually need wall breakers to break them down but i think the biggest part the biggest point that really stood out to me is at team preview I'm like, okay, this is not a bad matchup. Did did Chris bring rocks? And then as soon as I, I kind of, I actually, if he had brought hazards, they're like, yeah, he brought spikes. And I was like, no, you needed stealth rocks. Stealth rocks could have made a huge difference this game. Uh, as I was watching this game, you saw Incineroar come in so many times safely. And there's a difference between putting up stealth rocks, which only takes one turn, and having spikes, which you need three layers of spikes to have the equivalent of 25% damage on the Incineroar. Plus, the Stealth Rocks could have, I think, it could have really brought down the Glide Score. The Glide Score, I know, barely lived, and had there been Stealth Rocks, which could affect the Glide Score since it's a flying type, and not like the spikes, it could have made another difference there. But just, Chris, I really suggest um, try bringing Stealth Rocks rather than spikes in, in certain teams like this. Um, cause he had the Latios, which spikes, I mean, the stealth rock could affect. You get 25% damage on the Incineroar. Um, you get at least, um, 12% on the Gliscor. It was a lot of mods that really could have been useful against. Uh, but yeah, you did touch about the points that really, um, you just had Lando and, and, and the Throb for there to like really dish out damage. And it, it, you need a little bit more than that. And especially, I think the Lando was Scarf. So I made it a little bit harder on what moves he had to choose. So just, Chris, you have it. You have the team, my dude. I think even if you had brought Charizard, bro, if you had brought Charizard wide, you would have been in a such better position. He didn't get rocks up to like mid to late game. So like- It's very, very late game. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, after, I mean, after that point, you know, I mean, I, I've done like I've done uh, late game rocks before. It's helped me win battles, honestly. But I mean, if you would have put, if you just would have gotten them up, gotten them up super early, a lot of those rolls and a lot of those uh, mons that were almost dead would have been dead, and you would have gained a little bit more footing against um, against your opponent. So, uh, still a good match, still a wonderful match. Yeah, just, yeah. just the stall, man. Yeah. The stall was real. So much that party match. Party shots and U turns. I was like, oh my god, this is ridiculous. U turns, wishes. Once that Landorus got that wish back, I'm like, we are gonna be here forever. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's jump on to 13. The Clearfield Charmanders and their coach Jordan, your boy. Uh, I really <laughs> love how Jordan came out this match. Uh, this is the Jordan I, really I like do to too. watch, uh, man. He was able to really, truly um, cripple down his opponent's team. I, I think he really, he got it to the T overall. He got it to the T. Um, the late game drought, uh, solar powered Charizard, because I was in that position. 
I had to face this thing and I was like, yo, how do I take this thing down? Luckily for me, it wasn't late game, but it was more towards uh, early game that he brought it. But that Charizard was ridiculous. As soon as Pre Marina was like super low, uh, his whole team, I think Jirachi was left, that got popped down. It was a great, I think Jordan really set, up, set it up nicely. He really did overall. He said it perfectly that so that the late game he had it secured and he realized his opponent Brandon still struggles with bringing hazards and was able to use that to his advantage. What do you have to say about Jordan? Okay, so like I've known Jordan for quite some time now. We've you know, we've met in person, you know, we've commentated stuff for Pokemon battles. I love seeing this man battle because usually it's gimmick or it's just something that you would never expect from Jordan. And I ex I got the unexpected from Jordan this week. H him leading that Garchomp, I'm like, okay, he's going to get rocks up. And he straight up goes for the outrage when he knows full and well there's a Prima Arena right there. Yep. He got such a huge hit off so early game. And from there, you know... I will say, you know, there were a couple switches or like a couple sacks, you know, with the Greninja in particular and maybe the Mega Gardevoir, um, you know, that were risky. They were extremely risky for him to go for, but they were necessary because Jordan, like you said, Jordan was able to come in, get up that sun with that Ninetales for that Charizard. He knew that that was going to be what it was that got him that win this week. And, you know, making those necessary sacks and stuff, it was it was seriously really, really cool to see Jordan play this way. Um, I really hope to see more of this playstyle coming for him mixed with his gimmicks. Um, but all in all, just just bravo, J Jordan. You know, he had the necessary bulk to take on the Primarina with the Mega Gardevoir and just was able to hit the bulky Mons up front and just go for it and not overthink things so that Charizard could come in and get that uh, solar power win and... I'm I'm just proud of him. I, I'm I'm proud I'm proud of him with this game. I really liked it. Yeah, yeah, and it was a huge victory. Brandon is he's been a tough opponent. He started off really really strong. So to see Jordan finally um, finally getting some momentum back in his favor is really really nice. I was starting to have some doubt. I was like, man, can Jordan finally like pull through? And he he has. He, he's showing it. He gave me a run for my money last week. <laughs> but with that said, let's jump into coach number twelve. 12th place, whatever. Uh, the Lakewood Trevenant and their coach Alejandro, where he had to face off against me. Yeah, so, um, let me go ahead and uh start this off. Uh, just all in all, such an awesome battle. Um, I loved, I loved watching this battle, uh, from your side, of course. Uh, but uh, just going through everything, you know, I'm not saying that you know Alejandro played anything badly. Like seriously, Alejandro played really, really well this week. Uh, he made the right switches and stuff. Um, landed and he all his sleep the powders. Right. Landed all his sleep powders. And he, he <laughs> landed all of his sleep powders. Holy cow! Did he land all of his sleep powders? And you know what? That's a play style that just really fits Alejandro. He likes to play the stall. He likes to go for the sleep powders. He likes to he that's his play style and from that i feel that that's almost like his double-edged sword especially for this week because like i said alejandro while he's been, he's been doing extremely extremely well his play style is almost predictable to this point in time and it's not that i'm saying that alejandro is a bad player not by any means he has a very powerful team that that molds really really well together um it's just that alejandro uh at this point you know you can see the moves that he's going to make and you're thinking that no he won't do that it's too obvious and then he goes and does it and then you're left over predicting at times i felt like you know there were points in the battle where you did you know over predict on things but at the same time you caught on to that extremely quickly and you were able to make those necessary risks to go ahead and get your head back in the game which is why um you know gyarados was able to come in get that set up and honestly just put in a lot of work against his team like i said alejandro's a wonderful battler but um i feel like alejandro just like needs to mix things up a little bit with his play style uh or just like go for those extra over the top risks or things that he wouldn't do to gain the advantage but all in all wonderful match um there's not really much more to say because he didn't move up or down in fact our our 12 through 9 spot as you guys can see are all the same because I me mean, there was nothing bad about him there was really nothing bad about him what do you have points. to say about this battle oh no alejandro played amazing man i, I thought i really had him i was like yeah you know I, he can miss a sleep powder he did not miss a sleep powder um 
the Miss Magia set was beautiful. I, I know how, how well, how effective that thing is because I swept like Steven with it once. I was almost able to sweep him. Um, so I knew like um, he had me cornered uh, like midway through the game, like early to, I, I would say he had me, um, you know, we both had our, uh, it was a stalemate, uh, stalemate for the, the beginning. He really had me, I was okay. He's really, really, he's really making plays here. He's really thing. But he was actually at the same time making some of the obvious plays. Like, um, as soon as um, as Machamp came in, I was like, you know, this thing's most likely Scarf. Just bring in Gyarados. I don't have an item, so knockoff is not as much. And I, I resist a dynamic punch. So I was like, in, in the end, I'm, I'm good. I'm in the clear. And as you can see that, like, little things like that, I was able to kind of uh, realize, get a main. Um, cool. As you mentioned, yeah, yeah, some really standard sets. As soon as I saw how much damage the the Mammoth Swine was doing, it's like, okay, this thing is banded. Like, I was able to, you know, kind of narrow down his teams and whatnot. But overall, his execution, his uh, prep was, it was up there, I would say. Um, very unfortunate with that crit on the Tornadius. Oh, with Tornadius. <laughs> yeah. If not, I'm pretty sure it would have been a much, much closer match. Um, and again, though, it's, I mean... It's it's the game you play. You know, crits are gonna happen. Hacks is gonna happen. When you when you land that many sleep powders, I guess it's an even play up. But still, it's not the right way to think. But yeah, yeah, yeah. The only other thing I probably suggest is um, uh, Alejandro, don't let setup mods set up. That is like my number one advice for you. Uh, as soon as uh, Heatran came in, I know it was paraly uh, paralyzed and stuff. But I said, you know, I'm, what do I have to risk if I just go for a Dragon Dance here? And as soon as I went for Dragon Dance, I saw you went for Stealth Rocks, and I was like, this is GG. Like, you basically, you uh, you let me get a plus one um, Gyarados on my side of the field that outspent everything on your team. I could have got huge damage off on the, the Tornadus. It was like, I can OCO the, the Venusaur. It was just like, so yeah, from that match, really take away, don't let setup mods set up whatsoever my dude all right uh, moving into the number 11 spot we have the chelsea fell stingers and coach dj uh squid you wanted to take this one yeah for sure um so dj comes to me sometimes you know he, he shows me his sets and whatnot this is a very disappointing match for me because i did suggest to dj i was like dj run scar plus cephalon um he originally did have the scar plus cephalon but he's like dude the hundu the mega hundu is so scary funny fact fun fact Carlos did not bring the Mega Hundu. So his whole team <laughs> got wrecked by Scarf plus Lefalon. But I, I I respect DJ's um uh, judgment. He he doesn't feel like he was um at the he's not at the right level yet to run double scarf. If not, this game was in the bag. He did have the element of surprise because uh, we had a slight error that his Placephalon was still not in the roster, but he did make the transaction. But DJ really, really did play amazing, I would have to say. He really held his ground against against Carlos. He had Carlos on his toes. Um, Carlos had to make some very, very aggressive plays. Really aggressive, I would have to say. I was like, yo, if, if you know, DJ had just gone for like, uh, when the Zapdos is going for Roost, you gotta remember, when Amon goes for Roost, they no longer have the flying ability. So you could just go for Earthquake and you would've O-Code that Zapdos. Um, as soon as you went for Rock Slide, Carlos knew you were going to go for Rock Slide again. So it was a super easy for him to get in that Metagross and go for a simple Ice Punch. Another suggestion, DJ, is uh, when you have uh, a, um, a weakness like Ice with your your Hundoom, uh, I mean with your uh, Crocodile like that, don't switch into Togekiss. Try to um, take other measures. You could have switched into Ooxie. Um, same thing goes when you had... It was Serena versus Ooks uh, versus Ooksy. Um, just do a little bit of research. Serena gets knockoff. So as soon as you um, you you turned out and brought in this in their Infernate and you lost your Scarf, that opened the doors for the the sock. But overall, man, you had a really solid match. It was a just a few judgment calls, a few switches, a few move selections. You could have done better. Like two different moves with the Earthquake on the Zapdos or. Not losing the scarf on the um, on the infernate, you could have done 
you could have pulled the W, my dude. But other than that, it was just like two errors on your end, but man, you did amazing. Congratulations, dude. Uh, a top battle against one of the, the number one seed. Against the number one seed. So I gotta give it to you, my dude. I gotta absolutely agree with you. DJ, you've come such a long way uh, from the beginning. Um, I don't know how your play style uh, or like what you do when you do battle, if you have calcs open or if you just kind of look at the mons in general, but like if you're not doing this with like calcs and all that stuff, just because you know you're newer, you're still adjusting to like actually battling and having you know, different sets every week, you know, very kudos to you, my dude, because this was a very tough battle going into it. Like you said, Squee, going up against the number one team in the league is like the scariest slot pro is the scariest thing um and you played really really well like like squid said though you know the earthquake on the zapdos would have been so beautiful uh i like i could i the second i saw him go for roots i'm like there's got to be an earthquake coming there's got to be an earthquake coming yeah. and then it didn't come i saw the rock slide it's like there was such a good chance for you to to, to really put a dent into carlos's team you almost had it you were so close my dude but no all, all in all, DJ, I, I love watching you battle because every single week it seems like you gain more and more uh, knowledge and uh, just kind of what Squid said as well. Make sure you, you do your little bit of research uh, before or even during the match. I know for sure in my battles, I I look up I look up Pokemon move sets nonstop. I am on Smogon and I'm scrolling through things, which we can actually which we'll get up to here in just a second. Um, but no, DJ, I love watching you battle. You honestly have a lot of potential ahead of you. And I'm excited to see what the future holds for you. Like seriously, there is so much more that can come from DJ. And jumping out to the 10th spot, we have the Russellville Rockets and their coach, the Ratty Blue Wizard. Uh, man, I'll, I'll start this one off. I feel so bad for this guy. This guy, whoever this Ratty Blue Wizard is. Um, Going into this match, Steven knew, <laughs> I think he knew what was going to happen. As soon as he asked for me for help, I was like, oh, I already watched Brennan's team. As soon as he asked Arthur for help, he's like, oh, I already helped Brennan. So the fact that he knew he had three former champions already helping, like it, three mindsets into one, already get him feedback. He's like, I lost. Uh, he was going to try his best, which he did. He started off pretty solid. Um, you know, he got his rocks up. Awesome. Um, you can stop the Charizard. Uh, he was able to knock out the Ninetales, but Ninetales was able to set up the nice... Um, the Aurora Veil. The Aurora Veil. Perfect. Thank you. Um, you know, the only difference I think Steven could have done was... Which I tell him sometimes. It's like, even though you you feel like Rotom is not a good matchup, it's your only check to like to scissor like like there's certain mods i understand you don't want to bring and stuff but at the same time you there's certain mods you need to bring in case your opponent brings that other mod because without the without the rotom on his team scissor had could come in for breakfast lunch dinner and a midnight snack if it wanted to if that's really all i could do um steven I understand. I was watching his video, and man, you can see how how angry he was. RNG really wasn't on his favor with the sleep. Like, has had he got a one more turn of sleep on the X on the Scizor, he could have really pulled it back. Um, it's just it made a uh, Brandon made it so difficult for him to come. Uh, he did try. He he said, "Yo, if I just need, you know, some RNG in my uh, my, my my to go my way." Try to set up the swords dance potential. Get this a uh, fire uh, the fire punch kill here, and then I could win. But unfortunately, it didn't go that way. Um, hoping in the future, Steven can reach out to to his fellow colleagues before Brennan does to get that advice <laughs> and hopefully cut out some wins because he he's still in the playoff race. You're not out of it yet, man. Yeah, um, he sure. absolutely is. I'll come to you, man, if you need help. You still have mad. You, got, you have a lot of us that are willing to help you out, man. Uh, what do you have to say about this match? And I, I, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I really did feel bad with the RNG, but I'm a risky player. At the end of the day, I will. I, I knew that the the play 
with the bullet punch on the Mega Gallade after it had set up its own swords dance. Um, I did not realize it got fire punch until right before I was about to click bullet punch. Like I said, I look up the movesets and stuff. Um, and I realized that it did get fire punch. And at that point, I knew I was in trouble. Like, seriously, uh, this... If I did stay asleep that one more turn, you know, it would have been a whole entirely different matchup. Yeah. Um, which made it more, which would have made it more fun. I'm not gonna lie. However, just like you said, RNG has not been the kindest to Steven, but he had. I don't want to say he had a predictable team, just because you know we've been doing this for quite some time. We kind of know how each other plays, but four, five of these mons, I predicted what their sets were gonna be. Wow. And I got him spot on. Like, I knew the High Dragon was going to be Scarf. Yeah. I knew the Amoongus was, Amoongus was coming with Spore, of course. I knew it was going to have the Hidden Power Fire. Um, Mega Gallade is best when it sets up with Swords Dance. I almost predicted a substitute on it. Uh, Excadrill, I knew it had to either be a Double Scarf alongside High Dragon or a Focus Sash to help with the Rotom Wash with Mold Breaker. Um, the biggest risk I did take was the fact that Steven did not bring that uh, Rotom Heat. And listen, looks I, I like you said, Steven, I get, you know, if one Mon in particular bodies, you know, one of your Mons, that doesn't mean you still can't bring it for something else. You have five other Mons on your team to go ahead and back up that one Mon if it does have that weakness or does have that one Mon that completely wrecks it. Believe me. But the fact that you did not bring such a reliable... Um, counter to the scissor and actually a reliable counter to mega charizard x on top of that with levitate and being a fire type you miss out on so 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 much switching and like shenanigans with that rotom heat um at the end of the day you know what happened happened you still played really really well but watching your video back man i could just see the defeat in your eyes and i felt so so bad because you know all you needed was that one more was that one turn to turn everything around but RNG isn't the kindest to some of us. Believe me, I had that early on in the season, but you are not out of the playoffs race, bro. Just keep up the good work. And, you know, I know, I know that you'll make it to playoffs, bro. So just keep, just keep, keep up the good work. Yep. And then next stop, we have in the ninth spot, the Moon Valley Mewtwo's, as Brandon was mentioning, 9 through 12 have not changed whatsoever. Um, they all played very, very well. They, none of them were able to get the victory, unfortunately. But I feel like their standings are. It's where it should be for the most part. But Brandon's um, matchup, I'm going back to what I said week one. Uh, week one, Brandon, you just need hazards and you need... Uh, well, at least you have the setting up Zygarde part down, which you've been able to use very, very successfully. Stealth Rocks. That's all I have to say for this match. If you had Stealth Rocks, like, I think easily, oh. easily... Jirachi could have put Stealth Rocks up. Every time you, um, I know you went for an attack, but every time Ninetales was coming in, all you had to do was set up those Stealth Rocks. You could have legit, um, um, you know, slow down the uh, how many turns the Ninetales could have came in. You could have put a huge dent on the Charizard. And then with the Scarfer at the end, you really could have just secured the win. But Stealth Rocks really, really, dude. <sighs> It's just, you need Stealth Rocks. I understand you don't have the best Defogger, but now you have Mega Sable to bounce back and stuff. But Stealth Rocks, my dude, Stealth Rocks. What do you I, have to say? Absolutely. You know, the Stealth Rocks, like you said, Stealth Rocks were so, could have been so more effective in this game. Um, even being able to, you know, kind of do something different with the Zygarde. While you did say, you know, Brandon's been really working well with the Zygarde, with the Dragon Dancing and setting up and stuff. He could have also put Dragon Tail on this thing and paired that up with the Rocks, with the Jirachi, to go ahead and really swap out Jordan's Mons to really start doing a lot of different damage for this thing. And Zygarde being as decently fast as it is, that Dragon Tail could have been so effective. Uh, yeah, you know, like you said, Mega Sableye is there to stop the, the hazards, my dude. You don't have a good Defogger. You don't have a good Rapid Spinner. If not one at all, I don't believe so. But, you know, Mega Sableye is there to help prevent that. The quicker you can get that Mega Evolution off, the more reliable that switch in is, especially if you make it bulky enough. Um, and with the Jirachi as well, Jirachi doesn't have to be as offensive as it always has to be. You can definitely bring it defensively if you have to. And the Breloom matchup really did shock me. Um, I'm not sure why the Breloom was there, even though it did get a kill. Um, but 
seeing just how scary that fire team was uh i mean there are some reasons where i do see you can bring it there's but with so many effective fire types going against uh going against it with the Berloom. Uh, I feel like he could have brought something else, but the Primarina was beautiful. I love seeing Primarina in action um, paired up with Arcanine. I think it's a really good combo, especially with Mega Sable. Like just a perfect amount of bulk. Um, and yeah, it was it was a very close battle. Uh, just the, just rocks. Rocks were needed. That was... that. You, you said it right, Squid. The rocks were needed. Yeah, 100%. But now... Uh, Clearing up this next screen, we're going to head up now to the top eight of the leaderboard. And we have the Arizona Volcarona um, eight through three on top of that, not moving any spots. But Squid, go ahead and start us off with the Arizona Volcarona and how Mark played this week. So Mark, I have to give it to you, my dude. You had very solid reads. I, I love how you knew um, off turn one, man. He said, I'm going to bring in Jolteon. I know Trick is going to go for this Vault Twitch he read that perfectly he had all the necessary moose slots to take down his team like more or less i guess he was able to narrow down what um what move pools do i need to take down his team how can i take down the stack attacker he had the earth power probo pass with the sturdy he knew he's like if he doesn't bring up rocks i'm able to counter this super easily uh he was able to bring down the 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 type no which is super super bulky he was able to um I, I love the um, the scarf. I think I'm pretty sure it was a scarf boot boot for the 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 Manetric with the horn yeah, leash. I think that, yeah, it definitely was. Yeah, so I was like, Dude, that that's phenomenal. The the wall breaker um, Entei. I really love how offensive he was able to get off with this match. Um, just some questionable plays, like I would say when he bring on he brought in Halucha versus Meowstic. That's not a favorable matchup for you, I would say. Like, and there could have been different things like a thunder wave coming off as well. Exactly. And so, a very very risky play. So, so I don't know what was going on there. Yeah, he just went for swords dance, and I was like, um, okay. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. You know, he probably had something up his sleeve. Um, the his Gyarados unfortunately wasn't able to do as much work because the trigs amazing prep prep this week. Uh, but outside of like probably those two, his Entei, his his Jolteon, his everything else were able to really, really put in the work and get the W that he needed. He used them very, very effectively. I love, uh, even though he brings a lot of his banded Entei, it still does the work. Like, yeah, he's bringing banded Entei again, but still it's two shining the Clefable. And I'm like, whoa, this thing needs to be stopped. But I gotta give him props. Maybe Stealth Rocks could have been effective for him as well. Because you also see that a, a Focus Sash um, Pyroar was able to, you know, stay on the field a little longer. And get off those nice um, Hyper Voices and get the Willow and all that good stuff. Um, so I really suggest maybe a little bit of Hazards um, could have came with this match. But other than that, dude, you played a very, very nice game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like, like going off what you said, Spit Ante. Like, yeah, you can run a bandit every week, but there's a reason for that. There is an absolute reason why Ente is such an awesome mon to draft. Is because all you need to do is put a choice band on it and click Sacred Fire. And as long as there's not a bulky water type to stop you from Sacred Firing, Ente's really gonna run house. I mean, you can see it on this on your screen just as much as I can. Uh, that Ente this week got three kills. And there's a reason for that because Entei is an absolute powerhouse. Uh, on top of that, you know, uh, you know, Mark definitely did bring you know the right move sets. He definitely switched a lot of different things up. You rarely see the uh, Mega Horn and the Superpower on Tapu Bulu. Uh, you usually see it a couple different moves on it, but. No, those were absolutely wonderful moves. Uh, love seeing Mega Horn on top of Bulu because it's just one of those unexpected moves that it gets that it pisses me off when I see it too. And then the superpower on the Type Null was beautiful, even though Type Null bolts out that hit, it was still something to hit that to hit that Type Null for super effective damage, put a huge dent in it, and make uh, Trig really think on his feet. Um, and yeah, while the Mega Gyarados didn't uh, do a lot, you still had the team. Uh, perfect to get the win, and so just just kudos to you. Moving on to Antony and the Victorville Victinis. 
Oh my god. And Sony, I gotta give you props, my dude, for this matchup. I really, really did like this matchup coming into this. Uh, you haven't moved up. Yeah, we'll get into why, more or less. Uh, but you really, really, I, I love the, the game plan you came out with. You're like, alright, I need you train. I need this whole, um, this bolt training initiative. I need to get all this initiative going my way, you know. You got hazards up mid game, which is awesome, or mid to late to finalize, you know, just a step, step the W on Chris's forehead. But uh, really, really nice. You know, you kind of, I was like surprised. I was like, no mega, uh, no mega otter, no get, get that wish off. But you had a really, really solid core with just the, the Incineroar, the, the Glide score, the, the Savali. Those, those three, really unfortunate to see you lose Savali now. But those three mods to just get those U turns, get the parting shot off, and every once in a while, which kind of what Shea should have done, he got his Latios in, and bam, get a huge hit off. It, it made it very, very difficult for. What did he face? Chris. It made it very difficult for Chris, especially since Chris did not have wall breakers, to kind of get around this. Um, but man, dude, and Tony, I really, really love. Um, what you're doing with this team, what you do with this team is amazing. I really, dude, uh, it's a huge difference from last season to this season. Like, I really love how you're coming out. You're making the competition so much more fun to play against, especially for us high tier players. We look at your team, we're like, yo, this is a juicy one. What do you have to say about this, Brennan? <laughs> this, is, this is a big 16 ounce steak right here. And I'm going to tell you why, because my boy has Incineroar on his team, Squid. Oh gosh, yeah, no, this Incineroar put in so much work this week. It was the right bulky uh, mod to stop a lot of Chris's threats, as well as just being able to get those U-turn offs, certain to weaken things, and then just go for those all-out attacks when needed. Um, the, the pairing up with, with Gliscor really helps as well because they both complement each other in such a unique way. Um, yes, I, I'm actually quite su surprised that he did drop Savali because Savali put in just the most work. Also being able to be such that big bulk, being, holding that fairy plate if I'm not mistaken. And just like like you said, those switches were necessary. It did drag out the battle super, super long, but I mean... I mean, the, the results are there. I mean, you see that, you know, the U-turns and all that stuff, the toxic stall with Gliscor, you know, it was necessary for him to start weakening things so that Incineroar can just come in and click an attacking move because he knew that something was weak enough and the walls were coming down. And he got that 4-0. And that, you know, like, getting a 4-0 is very, very difficult. It's very, very difficult. And coming from last week against Jesse where he got 4 0 after that uh, Darmanitan belly drum sweep, I mean, it, it, it was just very, very effective. Um, I really, really like the way he played. He That loss didn't matter to him at all. He was able to bounce back right away. And um, yeah, it's just a, it's a fun team to play against. He has a very fun team, like you said. And yeah, that's really all I have to say. Um, but moving on now, we are heading into the kind of the highlight of everything. For this week this the match that was been hyped up since like three weeks ago we have the outback komala and jetman 99 not moving up a spot but he was able to take down the lazy ghost giving arthur uh his second loss for the season um this was such a unique battle uh watching from from the outside just because jesse played in a way that i've never seen before jesse was making he was really just like he brought a different team such a different team than what i thought he would uh bring for arthur he brought mindset with the switches and stuff and you can see it in his video he's talking about it he knew exactly what was going to happen there were a couple plays where he didn't go with his gut because he knew what was coming in but went against it which kind of put him on the back burner but no, both Arthur and Jesse played so effectively. They were able to make the right reads at certain times. And surprisingly, Regice, the big killer this week, getting four of the kills. Um, I will say, um, of course, late game, Jesse did get that freeze against uh, Arthur's Tang Growth, which did unfortunately cause Arthur the match. But other than that, I mean, 
Jesse had the right place. He brought Toxic, he brought Hail, so then he could start just chipping away Arthur's Mons more and more and more. Um, the Pharaoh Thorn was beautifully played, I feel. He kept it in the back end, sacked it off when it was necessary. Um, I will say, though, the the funniest moment was actually the first turn of that match when both Arthur and Jesse thought that they were going to switch into their own respective ground uh, water types, and they both... And, Jesse went for Grass Knot and Arthur went for the Z Grass Knot. <laughs> I thought that was the funniest thing because they both had that mindset. And from there, you know, the match just played out really, really well. Um, and when that magician took the Gudra's uh, Assault Vest, uh, Jesse stayed calm. He stayed calm. He knew he needed the Assault Vest, but that was okay with him. He was still able to play effectively around it. Um and yeah that this was a jesse that i was excited to see this man was making reads he was making the right calls just jesse if, if you have a feeling in your gut don't go against it. that's the best advice i can give you after this match and also stop getting the worst hacks of all time with that phrase yeah i have to agree man shout out to jesse's front office that helped them prep this week man huge victory huge victory um yo you covered everything to tell you the truth, he covered everything. He really, he kept his cool. I loved it. Like I, as soon as uh, the the Fox did lose his item, and I was like, oh shoot! Like yo, Jesse. Um, I wanted to say yo, like yo, dude, it has magician. Like you have to watch out. But at the same time, it's like, oh, what can you switch into? He had nothing else that he could switch into unless he wanted to give like Del Fox a scarf or something like that. So, um, great. You know, it was a great execution by Jesse. Um, just a few plays where he could have probably, you know, gone with his gut. I guess like the Giga Drain against the when um Tangrove, I think it was a Tangrove. He probably went for like Sludge Wave on the second one. He's like, you know, it, it looked like it was like a roll to kill, but I was like, it wasn't the roll to kill. So you know, he lost his uh, seismic toe to like an unfortunate right there play. Uh, but I think overall, he really, really, he was able to play right. Um, it was a great match until the very end. Unfortunate freeze, but. That's Pokemon, legit. It, it happened to me against Shay. I made the right plays, but somehow, you know, Pokemon just sometimes doesn't want to give you the W, and that's fine. We, 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 yeah, we, yeah, we've all been there. I mean, I've almost won against Squid. I can't count tell you how many freaking times, and I get crit. Yeah, exactly. So it's super unfortunate, <laughs> but Jesse, I really, really love. I, I, I think, especially after, oh, after the six O from Brennan, that man said, you know what? Forget this, man. I'm, I'm making a one eighty. He came out versus Antony, bro. He did, you know. Now he brought such an amazing, an amazing set with that Dark Yeah, no, he showed me. When I, he showed I wanna... me. I was like, what? Yo, like, where's the, where's the real Jesse? Like, bring me back the real Jesse. But, but yes, um, but the whole reason why we like everyone like three through like twelve has a moved is because no one really. Like, for where everyone was, no one really outplayed one another. Yes, Jesse beat the unstoppable uh, Arthur, but at the same time, you know, Matt still played effectively throughout the whole season. Same with you and myself and, and Carlos. And so, like, that, it was a big debate whether or not to move so many different people around or just, like, switch them one spot or another. It was very, very hard. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, as we do head into the Winnipeg Jellicent and Coach Matt taking the fifth spot, it, while I love the battle, it just, watching Matt's battle, it was Matt that played. And it's always been Matt that's played. And Matt's been playing really effectively this whole entire season. And so, like, once again, like, hate us for not changing much of the rankings except for a few spots higher and lower end, but... The battles were so good that it was it made it honestly one of the I think one of the most difficult weeks to, to judge. Uh surely agree, man. It really made it a difficult week. Um another reason why Jetman 99 is above and Tony, I just want to point this out, is because their differential is I think um Jetman 99 is at negative two, while Antony is at plus twelve. But Jetman 99 does have the head-to-head -head against Antony, and Antony is only one win ahead. So if Jetman 99 can get that one win and Antony lose one game, Antony's out of playoff, which is crazy until until Antony and Mark play, and then that can kind of decide the factor. But as soon as 
that happens, that Anthony lose one and Jetman 99 wins one, Jetman, you are officially in playoffs. So I know Dude, it's very, it's very, very close. Like we said, guys, it's, it's this. Nick, I do not envy whoever has power rankings next week. I know. <laughs> but moving on, like I said, we have Jet, uh, we have Winnipeg Jellison and Coach Manny Matt. I'll take um, this one. I can start this one off. So Matt, Matt. Oh I yeah, go, go right ahead. Sure. Like yo, I told him I love the choice scarf combo. Um, you know, it was just bulky enough to take a hit from the Mega Low Bunny. So he, when he did, you know, it was, he was able to weaken it just enough. Get off that nice um, dragon claw, and then boom. You know, he's like, he's thinking, okay, you know, uh, he didn't outspeed my Mega Low Pony. He probably won't outspeed my uh, my Larios, my Larias. Larias comes in, takes a dragon claw to the face, and drops. So you can see that it has speed enough to outspeed Larias, but not to outspeed the Mega Low Pony, which he told me, regardless, it couldn't outspeed. So that was a really unfortunate read by, by Shay, but amazing prep from Matt, man really amazing prep um you know as soon as ditto did come in late game you know and um like his own como he knew how to counter he had his tangro his bulky tangro which he preserved the evil light which whimsicott could have easily knocked off but he preserved it because he knew uh the dawn fan that dawn fan was amazing man that dawn fan was able you know tank a hit from the the bocorona get, uh, pick up the, the kill there um as soon as um, you know it came in, he copied the Dawn fan. He was able to counter with his tank roll. You know, yep. I, I say that Matt had control for most of this battle. Um, just he had a little problem with the Whimsicott, which is a very annoying monster to really counter. But as you guys can see there, that he was able to set up, you know, sticky webs out some turn. Where later on he was able to make the read as the Whimsicott went for the defog, he brought his in his area, um, area dose and he was able to get a free poison jab off because the only thing he could go for was, he either had to sack his Whimsicott or go for substitute, which you can see that Matt just had the control of this match. It was just, when was Shay gonna lose his footing and Matt gonna take over? Absolutely. I thought it was really cool seeing Matt bring Ariados. Um, such an underlooked one. And Matt, like from day one, has been like, guys, Ariados. Guys, Ariados. And everyone's like, Ariados sucks, dude. But no, Matt has proven us time and time again that Ariados can be used effectively at the right time. And Ariados really did come through. Like you said, being able to set up the sicky webs, like I think he set it up a couple times, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. and then just being able to threaten out such an obvious threat with that um whimsicott uh was really really awesome i love seeing tangela tangela is just like one of those other random low tier mons that doesn't get a lot of love but when you see it in action you're like wow this thing can actually put in so much work sometimes a little bit even better than tangrowth uh to counter with uh arthur's uh own tangrowth but I mean, this thing gets Eviolite, it can still use attacking moves, it can still use Leech Seed and all Toxic and all this other stuff. And Tangle is so, so bulky that if you don't have the right answer for it, it can honestly wear down your team. Um, I, with just, I just love seeing Matt's prep now. Matt, I love battling Matt. Matt's come such a long way, but now seeing his prep, like, I'm honestly starting to get nervous. Matt, you said this to me last week about how you should be fearful of me. Dude, your prep got has me scared because there's so many different sets that you have run now throughout the whole season that it's got me on my toes. The Call Mine Florgus I loved so, so much because Squid and I both love an offensive Florgus too, uh, when it can be also be so bulky. Uh, you did bring a, a more bulky variant, but that Florgus being able to set up a call mind and being able to hit the whimsicott because whimsicott really couldn't do much to you so beautiful you came in with the mega sharpedo at the right time being able to take little hits at a time get the liquidation off uh eating up the ice punch from the riperior and it's it was just really well played i'm surprised shade didn't swap out the coma all like squid said you running it to be bulky enough to handle the mega low punny but then turn around and knock out that freaking lottie dude it, it's just it's just like who thinks of that it's just one of those out of the like out of left field things that now has me scared for matt and his play it, it worked it obviously worked considering he got his victory and yeah it just it was really cool to see 
uh, to see Matt play this week. He was definitely in control. There was never a time where Matt wasn't, you know, wasn't overthinking. And there wasn't a time where Matt, like I said, just wasn't in control. He had that battle. Agreed. I completely agree. And then moving on to the fourth seed. Um, oh, we got oh. the Toronto to Ooh, the Toronto Totodiles and Coach Blazons. That's you. Yeah, I know, man. And right above me is my soulmate <laughs> partner, the Salt Lake City Swampers, man. And we Okay, let me go ahead and oh, let me go God. ahead and talk about you though. Go for it. I'll talk about um, you. Your team is absolutely scary. Um like like we said earlier on, uh don't let people set up on you. Um, that ironically works for both of us this week, but no, Gyarados <laughs> is such an interesting mon to work with, um, Mega or, uh, non-Mega, you know, you have that Intimidate that always is so effective, uh, being able to get the Dragon Dance off allowed you to just put a huge dent in so many different mons, you know, it's, of course, you know, Alejandro can't miss the Sleep Powder, but you know what, you didn't worry about that one bit, the fact that you actually ended up giving up this Gyarados now uh, for your final trade transaction actually surprised me because Gyarados was one of those mons that everyone was planning for. And uh, I feel personally, Squid, I feel like you gave up a really good member of your team, but that doesn't mean the rest of your team doesn't come through. I mean, the Golurk was just the right amount of bulk to go ahead and turn around and hit things that came in to counter it. Conkelder is a powerhouse to begin with. I mean, the fact you even got it last round in the draft is ridiculous. Um, and then Porygon 2... <laughs> I just hate Porygon 2 to so many different degrees, but you have it, you've used it so effectively, you have so many different sets that you have to use with it. Um, I'm excited to see what more you have with this thing, because Porygon 2, like I said, there's so many different things there. Physical, special, bulky, trick room, a setup. You know, there's so many different things that Porygon 2 can do that I feel like you're just beginning to experience with it. And then just having Bronzong paired up with it as well, I just feel is a wonderful core. Just because, you know, Porygon 2 is weak to that fight and got Bronzong to back that up. And then uh, while they do don't enjoy, you know, uh, like knockoffs and stuff, I mean, they're still there, man. They're putting in just the finest of work and your team's scary. Your team's not that fast, but the, what you're able to do with your team each and every year shocks so many people that they're not shocked anymore. They, they just have become numb to how well you play and how calm you can get um like you guys can even go and see just any past battle he stays calm even when the hacks don't go his way uh, especially with the sleep powders <laughs> and uh and you know when stuff like that does freezes. happen can't forget those freezes exactly and the freeze and the freezes and you know what yeah you know crits happen and stuff you know it was very unfortunate but you know still you you went back and forth with alejandro you played the way you needed to and gosh darn gyarados set up and it worked. <laughs> uh, and then we'll, we'll jump into the third spot. I, you covered everything. Uh, this man, from Brother 2, man. When I thought Alejandro risked the biscuits, but this guy, it, he risks the whole batch of biscuits. With that scissor set, man, that was phenomenal. I think he played it, as he mentioned, I think it's, um, there's a difference. I think something you and I do, we, we like to like really break down our opponent's team, like narrow down what sets um they usually bring uh what's their most obvious sets what i think i did that with alejandro like I, it's like he's like yo great prep with the love berry i knew he was bringing the sleep powder which was an easy setup for my gyarados so i said all right cool but brennan did the man the setting up the aurora veil um you had a light clay too right I had light clay. It was light clay, so I had eight turns. My goodness gracious. And then realizing, I, I'm pretty sure, like, early on, he's like, yo, there's no Vaporeon, and there is no, um, no Rotom He here. This is, as we mentioned, Scizor can come in for breakfast, lunch, dinner. It was amazing. Like, man, what you're doing week in and week out with these, like, the whole Nido King sweep, now a Scizor sweep. I'm just, I'm, I'm going into this match tonight and I'm just like, what sweep is he bringing tonight? <laughs> like, what do I have to be prepped for? And it's, it comes from the knowledge that you know your opponent so well, you're able to break it down so well 
which I'm, I'm having a struggle with. I'm like, yo, I, I'm trying to prep for everything. But you're able to really say, this is what I have. This is what my opponent's bringing. This is how I'm counter it. This is my game plan. You, you give, you gave, um, you know, you gave Steven like, towards the beginning he's like okay i have a great lead you said this is the lead i want it was like what i was like wait what is this guy talking about because you you're you're 10 steps ahead my dude brennan is 10 steps ahead and that is such a huge problem he's not afraid to take risk which has legit the main reason why you have been able to go from last he was in 16 spot a few like i would say what eight weeks I was ago in, i, I and think now, i was 16th of week two or three you're in the third spot which is like what happened what the tables have turned when brennan <laughs> has his mindset on pokemon like when real life issues aren't involved dude this guy is a beast to be reckoned with so i and like it. i feel my god dude it's just oh my god i'm so hyped for tonight I like just to just to go off of that you know i feel like like, I'm not, like, trying to overgloat myself or, like, put myself on a pedestal by any means. Believe me, I am not the best Pokemon player at all. But, like you said, I came from 16th to 3rd in the power rankings. That can happen to anyone. My first few weeks were absolutely terrible. But I, anyone can turn, can turn it around and get to this spot to where I am. And... Everyone here has that potential. We've seen people come back and do the impossible. This whole entire season. And so it's just it's just like with that, that it makes the season so much more scarier heading into these last few weeks. You know, some of us have lower tier, like, well, not lower tier, but some of us are facing some of the lower ranked uh, coaches and their teams, and we're still scared. Because we know that everyone has that potential to turn it around, make you drop in your power ranking spot, and have them jump up. And that's what I love about the LDL so, so much from where we've come from and where we are now. It's just amazing. But now moving on, uh, speaking of, of amazing, from the impossible, Birmingham Aaron, Lazy Ghost coach Arthur has finally dropped to the number two spot for I think the first time in this season. Ooh, ooh. No, he was at I think he, I put him at two spot at some some point because I still feel like Carlos was the better player because of the head to head. Yeah, but like oh god man, this match against uh, Jesse, you know they both had their game plan. They both knew what they wanted to do. Um, leading the Tapu Coco and then. Uh, going for that Bloom Doom. I knew that was a plan that Arthur had since day one. That's what he told me against Jesse. Um, and I was like, dude, that's brilliant. I, that's, I knew that's why you got Tapu Koko with Grassy MZ. It's such an awesome move uh, to use, especially for such a huge threat like Seismato that can come in. Even if it's uh, like a Scarf. Uh, like, like I definitely anticipated a Scarf a Seismato uh, to handle that Tapu Koko. But... Unfortunately, it was wasted because they both had both, like I said, both Arthur and Jesse had that same mindset to switch into their ground water types. And so they both countered with the grass knots. But no, uh, very, very interesting tech. Um, I, The Skarmory, uh, see it with, uh, what was it? Uh, light metal or whatever it is. Where it get, No, no, weak armor. Where it kept get, gaining speed more and more. So it was able to get off those attacks or get the the rocks up or do do whatever it needed to do to go ahead and uh just like just start putting on the pressure and start getting up those hazards and stuff um i wish i could have seen more from tapu coco i do understand that uh from the sets that jesse brought it made it a little bit more difficult but i feel like there were many a times that arthur could have just gone and just gone for the attack with tapu coco when it came in while there were obvious switch-ins there were still like i said there were still spots where jesse did misplay and overthought things and those were excellent opportunities for um arthur just to stay on the offensive instead of swapping out with tapu coco so i feel like that's where he did falter just a little bit but still seeing arthur play seeing the sets that he brings seeing the delphox still get that assault vest was so beautiful because it made delphox actually a little bit more of a threat in the long run from trying to kill it um but no he played really really effectively um i would have loved to have seen their thought process if that freeze didn't occur i do feel like arthur might have had the uh, the pull ahead just a little bit against jesse but then again we will never know how that battle will fully turn out without that freeze um but still, yeah, the impossible happened. Arthur finally got his second loss in the season. 
Uh, it sucks, you know, freeze hacks always sucks, but st still doesn't mean that, Arthur, you didn't play any more beautifully. Um, yeah, what about you, Squid? No, yeah, completely, I have to agree, man. It was a, just a great match to watch, man. For most of it, these two players really went all at it. Um, slightly better prep from the Lazy Ghost, but the thought process from Jetman99 had them not, not behind, man. They were neck to neck. Um, great prep plus great play style, you know, bam, bam, bam. It was like, I was like, yo, oh, oh my God. It was like watching two Titans battle, man. Legit watching two Titans battle. Hold on, let me get my dog to be quiet. <laughs> so, as I was mentioning, yeah, it was just, <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, it was a great battle, man. Um, I know hacks legit, I feel like were a huge factor, especially with like the, the pair, the Thunderbolt. Para, slowing down the Skarmory, bam, um, <clears throat> able to knock it out. The freeze on the Tangro, super, super unfortunate. Um, you know, if I think Jetman99 could have had the match if he had made every single play right, but yo, nobody can do that. Like, it's we're human, we make mistakes, we overthink at times, but he really, really did. He had good prep and he had a good execution. Arthur had very good prep as well just hacks tilts it a little bit more in jetman 99's favor than arthur's and that's really what it came down to super unfortunate so he jetman 99 played amazing but there was also some hacks like that played a factor like in my match against jay the crit 100 percent mattered and it's stuff like that but by no means do i feel like he should drop below the hc no arthur's still an amazing battler so is Jetman proven 99. Yeah, and they've both proven it. Arthur's definitely proven it time and time again that he's been sitting up at the top of the power rankings for a reason. You know, everyone, well, mostly everyone, sees him as, like, that pinnacle to overcome. I almost got it. I ended up losing to Arthur because of a Hydro Pump miss. But still, that doesn't mean, like, if I won, that means Arthur played badly no. at all. He still is, he's still that, just that pinnacle of what everyone wants to be, being able to think of such amazing sets that you can't really drop him lower than, than second. Like he's, he's lost, I feel like he's lost his second seed for right now. His first seed, he lost. Have it yeah. next week. Exactly. All right, you want to take over from the number one seed? Go for yeah, it. so of course, climbing up to the number one spot, it's so awesome to see this. The Des Moines Darmanitan and Coach Carlos, man. Who? what a battle this was. Um, Once again, Carlos just has such an interesting team. Um, Kind of going off of what Arthur said last week, it was very, very strange to see uh, Kafagrigas, I mean, Kafagrigas paired with that Ghost DMZ, but Carlos, time and time again, uses it so effectively. While this week, he did kind of... I want to don't want to say waste it, but he used it unnecessarily against. Um, I can't remember who it was that DJ had out, but it was the Pokemon had just low HP, and you know he probably expected a swap out somewhere, and that's where the Ghost DMZ would have come in so handy. But once again, um, Carlos is using such different mons together so wonderfully. I mean, he's got Sock, Metagross, and Mill Tank. Such lower tier mons that aren't usually seen a whole lot. Well, Miltank on and off, but Sock being used effectively, I'm pretty sure Matt is loving because Sock got four kills this week. You have uh, Serena putting in such good work. Seeing Serena, of course, helping out against that Uxi uh, with the knockoff really was beneficial. And it, he just goes to show that, you know, each and every week, Carlos can bring basically anything he wants because he didn't bring the Gastrodon, he didn't bring the Salamence. I mean, he didn't bring his Mega Houndoom like we said earlier. He didn't bring Sylveon. Those are such high-tier threats. Yet he didn't decide to bring them. And it just goes to show that Carlos really can um, use his whole team effectively. And, I mean, it goes to show. It goes to show. He's only lost one battle this whole entire season. He is 8-1. and one. And my only thing is, is who can actually stop him? I know who can. The Blazing Squid in playoffs. But <laughs> with that being said, <laughs> no, yeah, Carlos really, really, um, he was able to make the reads that he needed to uh, against DJ. DJ's 
the rising star at the moment and he knew I had to stop this rising star before he gets too up there. Um, making those reads with these Zapdos and making the reads with these um, the Metagross. I think really what really sealed the deal for him was getting that knockoff on the Infernape. The losing that scarf allowed yeah, Sock absolutely. to come in and just secure the game. Sock was such an amazing mod. I, I, I really, I hate because I prepped so hard for a choice scarf Sock. And against me, he didn't bring it. But against everyone else, he brings it. I'm just like, are you serious? But he knows, <laughs> he knows who to bring it against and who not to bring it against. Because if he had to bring it against me, you know he would have lost. But if he brings it against other teams, he knows how to kind of work around. So I, that's very adaptable of Carlos and his mindsets when he comes into these match, when he's team building. So 100% deserves the number one seed, in my opinion. And that is our power rankings from 1 to 16 for week number 9. And then... Who wins Battle of the Week? Let's find out. Battle of the Week Sweet. goes to Thumb Brother 2 versus the Ratty Blue Wizard. I truly Ooh. feel that Thumb Brother 2 played it perfectly to the T. Like, a, like as I mentioned, as his opponent thought, he had the leverage. This is exactly what Thumb Brother 2 wanted and was able to really, really execute. Thumb Brother 2 has been on a run that I'm just like, tonight is the night. I need to put a stop to this guy. I really uh, do. Just so you guys know, for week 10, Squid and I are actually battling, which we found really ironic considering um, we were doing the, the power rankings this week. So uh, it, it's just like, it's beautiful. It's, it's chaotically beautiful that, you know, we're facing off once again and yeah, uh, I, I did what I needed to do. There were some unnecessary calls that I shouldn't have gone for. But at the same time, I knew that it's high high re risk, high reward. And right now, it's paying off for me. So, yep. All right. But with that said, guys, we're out of here, man. You guys are amazing. Stay blazing. The squid is out. And thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you later, Thumb Thumbs. Peace.